play an integral role in animal destruction, and they are kept and read in many different places and environments with varying degrees of intensity, biological efficiency, and production efficiency. They also serve as cultural assets, especially in the north. According to economic experts, the Nigeria and my industry industry is estimated to be valued at about 30 trillion naira, and has remained under-exploited. It comprises it of approximately 20.91 million cents of cattle, 50.28 million eggs of sheep, and 8.04 million eggs of goods. That's according to Food and Agricultural Organization as of 2023. Spread across the city political zone of the country. These animals are kept by northern Nigeria, especially in the rural and suburban settings. Because the ecology in the northern part of the country makes it famous for light and small night dwelling and breeding. And I'm sure that our legendary women here we are doing with them. In addition to the women, our normal life comprises of 9.5 million sheep, big sun, 248. For 9 million birds, which would produce 663,608 vertical cuts of egg and 355,010 vertical cuts of food trimmings as of 2022. From a market size perspective, Nigeria egg production is the largest in Africa, with 614,154 vertical cuts of egg. No, South Africa is the largest producer of poultry milk, producing 1.9 million tons in 2022. In terms of size, Nigeria has the second largest population after Egypt, who has 300 million men, Morocco 222 million men, and South Africa 173 million men. In spite of its large size and potential, Nigeria has not been able to realize the food potential and animal agriculture as shown by the community of the country did it. When we look at the table on the screen, how much of you can see it? When we look at our growth since 2012, you can see that poultry still remains the best way of bringing the gap in the consumption of animal protein. As in the last 10 years, we got a growth of 56%, followed by that of pig. Unfortunately, we did not start with prevents a lot of Nigerians from consuming pork. Then, so that we have goat and sheep, then we have cattle. Nigeria Society for Animal Production, as we all know, is all the bridge. That means every person, every body, every profession, everybody will be talent that is involved in animal production as a member of this global organization. And therefore, in this day, we continue improving animal agriculture for sustainable economic development in Nigeria. That is actually inviting everybody that is involved in animal production. And so far, the president, the key speaker, the chairman of the commission, and all that have been searching, points to the facts 
that this event is actually happening at this point in time. Therefore, the president of Nigeria is the animal science for the big one. And it is reaching you that throughout this generation, that at the end of the day, we will have very practical, applicable resolutions and solutions. And therefore, the wishes to do that. I want to challenge the conference to come out with workable solutions to immediate challenging problems. Looking at the, uh, the high cost of people that have quite a lot of obligation um, uh, uh, research findings about alternative costs. Please, I want us to work the talk, raise the bar, going on to getting these to commercial available levels. One. Two, let the alternative be sustainable and let the cost implications be very, very uh, applicable to current uh, challenges that farmers or livestock farmers are going to. Now, I want to also say that the type of upon which the uh, practice of livestock production stands for is the research. The industry which is the entrepreneur, the uh, policy which is civil service, the two policy and uh, industry depends on research. I believe the conference we are going to come out with something very useful to help the industry. I remember in Ghana, so many years ago, most of the policies I gave was trust. I'm not sure, I don't think in Nigeria is quite different. Most of the policies from government is from religion. So about 80% of the things they do, they have to promote trust. So like one of the conferences in China, Minister of Agri, that you can't grow trust at the end of the day, you don't uh, remember what the animals eat. So after the crops have been used, the end product becomes animal feed. So this time I want to charge you to include animal related issues in your policy. And I'm happy to announce that one of the things we are doing, we call it rearing for food and jobs. Initially it was planting for food and jobs, because they were thinking of promoting crop production. Now they have to add rearing for food and jobs. There's a resource by nexogo.com. The title is How to Build an AI Driven Company. And it's part of the, the gains from this uh, presentation. It's a step by step guide in building an AI driven company. And since all of our enterprises, animal sciences, are enterprise driven, so we can look at that again how to build an AI driven company. So we have case number one for the use cases. For those who are familiar with commercial dairy, the real people concept. We have sensors that monitor body condition scores, gate scores, estrus detection, and of course predicting the conception rate. Where body condition scores are below a certain rate, fertility will be very low, conception will not happen. Not if it will not happen. So we have sensors that track body condition scores, sensors tracking estrus detection, sensors tracking the gate score. We also have sex on tracking mastitis. Mastitis is bad news, but mastitis can be tracked using a number of uh, sensors, including through somatic circle or through uh, sensors that measure electrical conductivity of milk, ETC. Again, you have the full scale deployment of sensors to track key economic variables in daily. That is use case number one. Use case number two is aquaculture, AI, the feed formulation in aquaculture. We have the balancing of the ingredient availability, the prices, environmental factors, and then the gains, improved efficiency, reduce environmental footprint, cost savings. Again, we have the deployment of sensors for feed formulation in 
aquaculture. That is use case two. You have use case three, which is optimizing feed grades of supply chains. This was mentioned before. You have the deployment of AI algorithms in this case. You have use case four, ML algorithms for genomic prediction. This were compared to traditional ML uh, compared to traditional algorithms for predicting value estimation and then the superiority was established. Uh, what we see, this dashboard is from the IPC, the Integrated Food Security Services Application. And what, we, what we're looking at here is that presently, as of today, as of the time it was captured, that was some like four, three days ago, we see that in Nigeria we have, I mean, across the world, globally, we're looking at the global picture, we have over 150 million people in food crisis situation. That is what it shows, the global picture. Now, based on the classification that has been accepted by, by scientists, um, we have five scale. It's just like a five point like a scale, but this time it's not, it's not made of opinions, it's made of artifacts. The first thing says it's green. That means it's normal, it's minimal, the country or the nation is still doing well. When you go to stage two, it's stress. That means there's a lot of pressure on the household. When you go to phase three, we are talking about crisis itself. The household don't have enough income. There's, there's high competition, high level competition for the household. And then you go to phase four and phase five. That is the place we don't want to get. That is really farming, emergency, and critical situation. Now, what did we see? We see that in the global picture, in the global population of people in crisis situation, expressing the food crisis, Nigeria is contributing about 12% to that population. That means 12% of that total population of people in crisis are in Nigeria. We can think about that. Now, um, the other two we're also looking at is to present just let's, let's capture what's happening in the Sahel region in Africa. And we know the crisis is happening in, in Burkina Faso, in Mali, in Niger. If you look at the picture very well, the graph, what the dashboard is showing is if it is green, I mean, you understand, if it is green, you are good. If it is yellow, it's like a yellow card, it's giving you a warning. Once you get into the red, the brown, you are in critical situation. Now, if you look at the Sahel region, from Mali, Niger, Burkina Faso to Chad to Sudan, whether it is the Sudan or the South Sudan, you can see that those the color is not green. Neither is it yellow. You have more of the brownish and, and the brown situation. Now let's think about what is happening in those nations. Studies have shown that there's a high level of correlation, which is actually dangerous, between food insecurity or food crisis and civil and social unrest, political instability, insurgency. Now look at Nigeria where we are. That tells us that um, we should be careful as a nation. It, 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 um, it, it, it's a wake up call. That we are, we are perhaps sitting on the king of, of power that's about to explode. Let's, if you look at this, uh, this is not just from IPS and what bank, uh, what program also. In, in 2022, at the bottom left, if you look at what you have there, just because of the conversation, you have a lot of the green and the yellow you barely have except in, in the northwest and brown. That's we're not so much in the crisis situation. We're around the minimal and, and uh, stress situation. But in 2023, as of 2023 December, if you look at the change we have, we have now more the green, which is minimal. That is also that are undergoing minimal crisis in terms of food or availability. They've reduced. We now have the crisis situation. So we need in a year. Look at the changes. If you look at the percentage of Nigerians experiencing food crisis, in 2022, we had about 8.5 of our population. In 2023, we moved to 9.3. Now, in 2024, as at um, the projection we have, we have 13%. Now, the population is saying 26.4 million Nigerians are in food, expressing food crisis, food insecurity. Let's put it in perspective. Based on the projection we have for data and, and national population, that is the population of Kano and Lagos put together. Now, because we are having it in a battle or your state, let's, let's also bring it home. Um, that's about all the states in the southwest, excluding Lagos. So, what we are saying that all the five states, in terms of the population, are expressing food insecurity, food crisis. That tells us the kind of situation we have on our hands. And I'm sure some of you are also talking uh, about what is happening around. And the issue with food crisis is that. It is food that has become unavailable, unaffordable to people. 
and to household. Now the projections we see for 2024 to 2025 is not looking good. And that's what we're looking at. It's not looking good at all. That means there must be an intervention if we have to um, be safe for ourselves. There's a need for us to increase our production in such a manner that this is going to contribute largely to the GDP of the economy. Till now, we are not seeing that much, but we want the production to increase so that we can have our quota, which can be large, which should be large, in the GDP of the economy, and then we can have a sustainable economy. We have seen government helping people in crop. We all heard from the brilliant speaker. All you hear is but we cannot do, we cannot have a sustainable economy without having the animal aspect of it. So we are using this law to call on our government at all levels to come in to assist and enhance animal production, different animal production, so that our protein in level can increase to be able to feed the economy and even feed Africa. Nigeria has the capacity to do that. We just seem to need is commitment from the government. All the stakeholders of the government, right from the farm level to the community. We, over the years, we have led government to have one policy statement concerning agriculture. But once it gets to the point of implementation, it, it runs into a storm. Last than a few years, nothing happened. Like the statistic I showed during my presentation, you can see that in the past 18 years, animal product consumption has been on the decline. There was never a year you went up. This only goes to show that all efforts of government came to a lot. That's why I said no commitment. Government must be committed. All the stakeholders stakeholder must be committed. Right now, the last of the is us. Due to high cost of input, food, drugs, food additives, and the low purchasing power of Nigerians, those three factors they are they are they are killers. And if government, if we must improve animal protein consumption. In there, God made me to tackle this train evil. I call them train evil. The rising cost of input and improvement in the purchasing power of Nigerians. Protein is not a luxury. It is a necessity. If you want healthy Nigerians, if you want our children of today, who are leaders of tomorrow, to develop intellectually, we must feed them with the appropriate amount of animal protein. Good nutrition is synonymous with good leadership. So I'm making a clear one call to those who are putting the water with today. Come down to the level of the farmer. Try and understand their problem. Because if you don't understand the problem, how can we profess solution? I will give you one scenario. Since last year, but, uh, so you been, the top soya bean has been going up. Last year, to buy a trailer of soya bean, you need about 3 4 million. Today, you need 21 million. Do you know why? So you have been is going to that of your country. Because the, the processors of soya beaming delivering this export soya to the country, they make more money to USD. So you have been, that's not enough for us to consume locally. You are exporting. It is wrong. It is wrong. To tackle that problem, come to tackle this problem. For example, government need to ban the exportation of soya beaming wheat offer. Mess and other food items that Nigeria need to consume and animal that need to feed their animals. It is why we have more than enough that we can export. It is 49th edition of INSAP conference and um, I have been attending INSAP conference um, for close to 20 years back and um, if I may say 
This is the first time I am seeing registration, online registration from some conference of about 700 members. It's a great one and if you come, if actually you are at the venue of the, this conference, you can see the organization. You know, you collect your conference materials within a very short time and look at the venue, look at the participation and what I do. Honestly, I have to commend the effort of the organizers under the chairmanship of the professor. Bye -bye. We will them and the rest of them go in so many, many others who participated really, really well seen to the actualization of the conference. I'm highly impressed. It comes to animal products in general. We need intervention. I had a course online recently with in Israel, but it was an online course. And we're talking about dairy production, the army dairy books. And I spoke with them. What can we do? They told me that in Kadia we have to work with the government. There are some things we have to do that they will not work with me. Not even with my institution, like the government, and there are also some policies if they are put in place, it will help us. We are looking at today. I don't know how much a ton of corn is. A ton of corn, it has gone yesterday. I bought a crate of, of, of egg, I bought it for 3,500 naira. You understand? I had the only one egg costing 50 today. So, all these things, common man will not eat egg, common man will not drink milk. So, what will common man do? Common man will Man cannot eat fish, he cannot eat meat. Do we want them to just die like that without going to nutrition? So the government has to step in to ensure there is good if we have to import some of these things within sorry within the time limit so that uh, the prices of the inputs for agriculture, especially animal, can be reduced so that we can have sustainable you know people going into it. And also when it comes to prices, there was a time there was ASM. If you have to clear some some fans and those people could not they could not go back into farming if the government could intervene check, check and be sure and be able to compensate farmers if we are sure we have a strong support many people will go into agriculture and we may be able to alleviate some of these problems and it's going to be a gradual process very well streamlined to uh, you know, set a base for the new force, uh, the new system of conferencing or running conference. So I think I say kudos to the organizers. Security to me uh, embraces a very wide area. And uh, people talk of food security only from the arm of securing farmers. But it involves both the uh, downline, but from the primary, secondary to the tertiary. That's involvement of the primary production, secondary production, and tertiary yeah, production. And what do I mean by this? If, if from the primary production, the processes that I involved, the cycle, there are breakages. Breakages in terms of, uh, uh, for instance, do we know the statistics of the uh, livestock we have? If we know their provisions, to take care of the husbandry practices like feeding. Then, apart from that, uh, secondary production, like processing of the livestock, are their standard abattoir set up? Are they are the, the, the population is huge and still lacking meat. The meat is going wrong. We are standing up at We are standing up to assist in guarding against losses arising from poor production. The tertiary, this meat that the meat products are there 
package into secondary uh, consumable end products like corn beef, like uh, beef in Burrow, we have everybody is just doing everything in in an organized system. You have kirichi, you have uh, uh, people processing meat. You go, you, you know, then you have. Uh, they, 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 we don't even have even the beef we are talking about. We have, have have them in a specific form, as in slabs or in cut ups. Now a lot of losses. The bone, the, the 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 viscera and all that that could throw up other secondary uh, uh, industries, you know, like uh, cottage industries, meat, meat and bone meal and all that, and all that that will uh, generate jobs and the uh, income. And we doing these things right. So that is why conferences of this sort involving researchers from diverse uh, backgrounds and specializations are very important.